guys haven't played since December 17th. And uh, obviously you had a little time off, but how good did it feel to kind of come out the way you guys did and have the first period that you were able to have? Uh, yeah, of course, uh, it's been a while since we played, but uh, I think we came out great. Uh, we had good practice, so uh, just translated into a good start there, and we were uh, pretty happy with our first period. Um, sorry, guys, I can't I can't hear Jimmy, so I'm not sure if that if you guys are getting there on my side. But um, you know, and then just obviously you guys have a good penalty kill, but what do you guys have to do to kind of clean up the the amount of penalties you're taking? Obviously, a few too many, especially against an Iowa team that has a very good power play. Yeah, um, some of some of them were uh, tough calls against us, but uh, also some of them were were us being undisciplined, and uh, that's definitely something we're gonna have to to eliminate from our game if we want to be successful. Even though if, even though we have a pretty good penalty kill, um, that's definitely something we're gonna have to look after, especially if we're uh, going into the playoffs and stuff. That's that's something we have to take out of our game. You know. How good is it? How good a story is it to see Evan Cormier come in the way he did? And you know, I mean, you guys had obviously a lot of chaos ahead of the game, not knowing what who's going to be in net. What a good story is he, or what a good, how good a story is that that he's able to come in and give you guys uh, enough of an effort to give you the win? I mean, it was it was phenomenal uh, tonight, uh, this this afternoon. Sorry, and uh, the, we started the game too. He made some big saves, and he gave he gave us confidence and. Uh, when you have a, a goalie playing like that, it's pretty easy to to, um, to be able to try to help him and play as, as well as we can in front of him. And like I said, he he was uh, unbelievable for us tonight with a short notice like that. And uh, super grateful to have him. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah. Jacob, do you have anything for him? Yeah. Um, hey, Jimmy, I just wanted to ask you uh, what it was like for you guys mid-game to see Christian Reichel's first career NHL goal scored on the scoreboard. What was that like? So, uh, super happy for him. Uh, just uh, the nicest guy. And when you see stuff happen to good, to good guys like that, it's just, it's just uh, that's, that's, why we, that's why we love the game so much. You know, you see this guy comes to work every day. He's, he's always the guy that works the harder. And uh, and good stuff happens to him. It's we, we were just all happy for him for sure. I mean, how unique was that uh, of experience? Where you know, there's no fans in the stands, but you know, they show something like that that I assume kind of got you guys energized in some degree. Um, do you usually get information like that filtered at all during the game, or pretty much um, after the game entirely? Uh, I mean, we we saw it upstairs, and I I, I think they just put it out put it up there for us and uh, for us to see. We were all pretty uh, proud for him. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's just something something great, great uh, that's happening to a great guy. So uh, I guess everybody felt, um, everybody was super happy and uh, it, it, it definitely helped us getting the win for sure. How big, uh, you know, Declan Chisholm got the, the first goal of the game pretty early on. Um, you guys have been, as a unit, your defense core has been a big part of your team. Um, how how impressed have you been with your team's blue line's ability, not just to provide offense, but um, stay true to the game defensively as well? Uh, I didn't hear the, the beginning. One more time there, Jacob. Sorry, I was going to say that, you know, Declan Chisholm scored the first goal. Um, and obviously the, the blue line has been producing a lot of offense. I want to ask how impressed you are with their ability to, your guys' ability to produce offense, but also stay true to your defensive game. Um, like, like I said previously, uh, I'm not very, very, like, I'm not surprised at all because we, we, these guys have been playing here such a long time and it was just a question of time before this, this all came together and uh, we're, we're seeing great things. And I guess like, these guys got so much experience under under their belt, even if they're they're young. So it was like I said, it was just a question of time before everything came together, and uh, and that's that's the product of uh, these guys working hard and uh, improving every year and uh, having confidence. One last one for me, Jimmy. Um, you've played a lot with Billy Hino. I've asked you a lot about him, and something I noticed today and in the past was what Eric has mentioned to work on with regards to killing plays down low, and you know. Uh, transition. What have you noticed um, from your D partner's ability to stop the play either with his body or the stick um, 
against the opponent. We all we all know that he's uh, a very gifted player, uh, especially offensively. But uh, lately, he's been working really hard on um, you know trying to stop plays and stuff. And he's he's not a, a big a big guy, so uh, he's using his sticks very good, and he's keeping a good gap. And nowadays, it's more about like how you move your feet and uh, how you keep a good stick. And uh, I think he's improved a lot, and he keeps he keeps working on that every every uh, every day. And uh, and we saw it tonight too, a couple of times. He had a good gap, good stick, and he, he was able to um, um, turn turn the puck over and um, go on the offense.